Hi, my name's Emma, and I'm a certified Dipsado specialist. And today I'm going to take you through all things canned email in Dipsado. So I've seen a lot of people have questions about how to send them, how to make them, but smart fields and different things. So we're going to cover all of that today. So to get started, what is a canned email? Canned email is basically just a template. It's an email that you know that you're sending over and over to different clients so that you write it in a way that you can um, have Dubsado auto-populate certain parts so that it applies to all of your clients. And um, in Dubsado, you have a number of preloaded canned emails that you can use as a starting point. So if you look here in this test account that I have, there's these that say clients. So these are all in your Dubsado account from the get-go. Um, if I scroll down, some of these I created for a workflow. These inquiry emails are also already in your account, these payment reminder ones, and these schedulers. So these are all a good starting point. So to create a canned email, all you would have to do, let's say, let me go to the top, you would just duplicate that. If you wanted to keep the template in your account intact, you duplicate it, then you just open it, and then you can change the title, change the subject, and go in here and adapt it to your um, services, basically. So there are other types of emails in your account already, and those are called default canned emails. So those are up here. So if you click Edit Template, you'll see all of these. And these are the defaults. Let's say if you're sending an invoice from a project and you click Send Invoice, this is the email that will pop up. So you can change this. The only thing to keep in mind is that depending on which one of these it is, let me go back. For instance, this contract completed, it will send to every client that signs a contract, regardless of what type of service, what contract they're signing, this will go out to every single client. So just keep that in mind when you're editing these default emails, that some of them need to apply to all of your clients and all of your services. But you can come in here and change this wording and make it your own, adapt it to your business. Um, let's say this one's not even, doesn't even have a signature. So you could go down here and say thank you and then insert your signature, which is here. Right? And then you hit save and close. So from now on, every contract that goes out, once it's signed, the client will automatically receive that email. So another way to create canned emails is to simply click new canned response. So you can see here that there I've categorized them by title. So this is what's considered title. This one's visible to you and not to the client. The client will only see the subject and the body of the email. So the title is for you to remember what that email is about and what you're using it for. So if you go in here, you're just going to fill out the, the title for yourself the subject and fill out the body of the email. Pretty simple. So once you have your canned emails ready to go, how do you send them? That's the other question, right? So you can do them directly from a project. So inside the project, all you're going to do is click send email. And here, if you click this bookmark icon, you'll see the list of all of the canned emails that you have in your account. So it's simply a matter of choosing the one that you want to send to your clients and sending it out. Pretty straightforward. The other way to do it is inside of workflows. So I'm going to go to this sample uh, workflow that's already in your Dipsado account, and I'm going to click Add Action, and it's going to say Send Email. So what you have to do is set when this is going to go out inside of your uh, workflow. So is it like three days after everything else, before it, after all previous actions are complete? Again, you're going to select from the list of emails that you have in your account. So let's say this is the one you wanted to choose. You selected it. It's going to populate the subject line, and it's going to fill out the email body. You can edit that email inside this workflow, and it will only apply to this workflow. So it's almost like you're photocopying the canned email from your account and applying it, that photocopy, to a workflow. Um, if you edit your canned email templates in the other section where you had all your emails, 
it's not gonna apply to this workflow, which has its pros and cons, right? So if you wanted, like if you updated your canned email and you wanted it to apply to this workflow, you'd have to come to this step in your workflow, select the updated email, and then, then you're ready, then you would hit apply. But the advantage is if, let's say you have an email, you just wanna tweak it a little bit for the service that this workflow is for, for the package that you're delivering, you would make a few changes here and hit apply. And again, you're not editing the template, the master template, you're just editing the version that's applied to this workflow. I, I also get a little caught up on that sometimes. So it's just good to know. If you make changes here, it's not applying to the template. And if you make cha changes to the template, they're not applying to the workflow. So just remember that. And that's what you would do. You'd hit apply. And as you can see, it's here at the bottom. So smart fields are basically a way of Dubsado auto-populating certain elements from your project, information from your client without you having to manually add them in. Right. So let's look at this one. It says, hey, client first name. So you don't have to add the client's name. Dubsado is doing it for you. Here it says, here are the details of this specific job. Right. So this is the start date. This is the start time. If you have a type of project that has time, like a wedding photographer, let's say. Address. And then obviously these are things that you would have to edit. This line here, these tips here. But um, if you need to get back to me, you can call them at this number. So if you update your number in your settings, Dubsado knows. So you don't have to go manually into all of your emails where you've added your phone number. Um, so that's the cool part. Same with the email signature. Like you, if you copy and paste an email signature directly into the canned email, if you update your master, so to speak, uh, email signature, um, it won't apply to your canned emails. So using canned emails is pretty smart. So the, the way to do it is simply you go to the bottom here and you can see that there's a variety of different types of smart fields. So these are by project. So these are this specific client project. These are your client's information, right? So you've been gathering these through lead capture forms or proposals. So first name, last name, and alternate con contact, first name, last name. So this works well for weddings where there are two people involved. So um, the only thing to know is that canned emails will go out to this first contact, not the alternate contact. You would have to manually CC the alternate contact. Um, so that's a disadvantage, but the system will take their information. So for invoicing, it's the invoice total the subtotal tax remainder which is nice because like if you're sending them an email that says you paid x you still have x left on your invoice all of that can be auto populated um your this is your business so this is your name your email your phone so that's what we saw in that other email is your phone your logo all of these things email signature at the bottom um, these are the current date and time, links for forms, for contracts, for portals. These are all the appointment smart fields for a specific appointment. Um, yeah, forum links, payment plans. So there's a lot of information that you can pull automatically. So when you're writing your canned emails, think about what how you can make the most of it by using smart fields so you don't have to go in there and manually add stuff. Try to use smart fields as much as possible. It'll make your life a lot easier. So how do you send forms attached to canned emails? So there's two ways to do that. Again, manually and through a workflow. So let's go to the workflow. If you think about it the way Gmail does, you would basically say send email, and then attach a form but in Dubsado it's you have to send the form and then attach an email to it so again this also took me a little while to get used to and this is one of the things that there are a lot of mistakes inside of workflows is that people send an email thinking they're sending a form so always if you're sending a form if you're sending an appointment scheduler make sure you select those 
actions inside of the workflow. So let's click send form. And again, you're going to set the timing. You can do it fixed at a certain date, or you can do it relative, depending on what you want to tie it to. Um, and then you're going to select a form, and then you're going to send an email. The only thing you have to make sure of is that this smart field here that I'm highlighting is inside of your canned email. So keep that in mind when you're writing canned emails and you know that you're going to be sending a form with that canned email, make sure you use this variable, this smart field. So if I scroll here, you can see that it does have a form link, so that's going to be fine. It also has the portal, that's, that's fine, but this is what you really need to make sure is there. It won't work otherwise. You'll send You'll say you're sending a form, but you're not going to send anything to them. So they're going to write back to you and say, where's the form? I don't see anything, right? And you're going to click apply. So let's say we're doing it for an appointment scheduler. You go here. Again, you change the dates. You find the scheduler that you want. Let's say a discovery call. And in this case, instead of the form link, you need the scheduler link. So let's find something where I'm sending out a scheduler right? I'd like to schedule an appointment with you. So this one is to invite them to book a discovery call. It, and it has that. So we're good. I'm going to click apply. So that's how you would do it in a workflow. So let's say you're going to do it in a project. You're going to send it manually. What you're going to do is you're going to go to forms. You're going to select a form and you're going to click add and then you're going to click send. So this is the email that popped up, but if you wanted to choose a different email, you're just going to go in here. And again, you have to find one that has the form link or you can type it in manually. But let's say you're sending this proposal. I know it's a coaching intake form. So what's going to happen is that Dubsado is going to replace that form link that you have inside the email, that smart field. It's going to replace it with this button that has the name of your questionnaire and when the client clicks it, it's, you know, it's a link, it's going to open up the form. So that's what happens. That's how Dubsado replaces the smart field with an actual button. If it doesn't see that smart field, it's not going to know to create that button for you. So same goes for the appointment scheduler. Let's say you wanted to schedule an appointment. You're going to choose one of your schedulers. You're going to click add. You're going to click send. And this is the default email that's going to pop up. This is the one that we were using in the workflow. So this is the default email for, um, for schedulers. And it's replaced that scheduler link with the button to the scheduler. So like if I open this, this is what's going to pop up. So that's how that works. The other question that I've got is how do I send an attachment inside of an email that's coming from Dubsado? So the answer is, if you want to send an attachment, that's not something that you're sending to everyone. You would have to send it manually. So you click send email and you see this paper clip so you can attach a file here. OK, so if you're sharing something like a welcome packet that you send out to all of your clients, what you can do is upload the PDF to Google Drive and then use that share link, make it public so that anyone with the link can see it. And then you can use that link inside of your welcome email in Dubsado. And then all of your clients will receive that PDF. Um, the watch out is that if you update the PDF and then you upload it to Google again, that link will change. So you have to remember where you use that link and go and replace it. So one solution to this is instead of sharing a PDF, you can share a Google Doc. And instead of giving them a link to edit your Google Doc, you give them a link that creates a copy of your Google Doc inside of their Google Drive. So they get like a photocopy of your file. Um, I know Google Doc doesn't have as much in terms of design, like you can't make files that are as pretty as you would like in Canva, but that's one workaround. The other option is to create a Canva preview link so you create your PDF inside of Canva, and then instead of downloading it and giving them a copy of that PDF, you give them like a, a view link. They can only look at it. So that way, when you edit the file, 
uh, any new client that's using that link or any client, even old clients that are using that link again, will see the updated version of that file. So that's the workaround um, instead of manually attaching PDF files so that you can use them inside of your canned emails and not have to worry about attaching anything. You're giving them a copy of the file or a view link. Um, it makes things a lot easier for you. That was it for canned emails. So if you have any questions um, or if you need help setting up Dubsado for your business or you have a Dubsado account and you just need some tweaks, some updates to your workflows, to your forms, feel free to reach out. Click the link below. There's a link to book a discovery call and we can talk about where you're struggling, what you need help, and if it makes sense, we can talk about what it's like to work together. So that's it for today. See you next time.